Welcome to chapter 3 of the book of the Song of Solomon. We have a continuation here now from the second chapter uh, with the Shulamite woman uh, speaking. And it begins, I'll read a little in the Greek and then we'll go through the uh, book, uh, chapter. Epi kitimu inixin ezit tisa on igapisan ipsikimu. Azitisa afton ke uk evron afton. Hekala sa afton ke uk ipikuse mu. Upon my bed in the nights, I sought whom my soul loved. I sought him. I did not find him. I called unto him, and he hearkened not to me. I shall rise up indeed and shall encircle in the city, in the markets, and in the squares, and I will seek whom my soul loved. I sought him, but I did not find him. The one, They found me, the ones keeping guard, encircling in the city, saw not whom my soul loved. It was a little time when I passed by them, until of which I found whom my soul loved. I held him, and not that I let him go, until of which I brought him into the house of my mother and into the inner chamber of the one conceiving. Boy, quite a thing here, and I relate this to Jesus. First, the seeking love, seeking God. Uh, We can seek God in ways, if we have a calloused heart and a hateful heart, we're probably not going to be seeking God, unfortunately, and suffering the consequences. But a heart uh, seeking God, let's find in the New Testament here a person who sought God in the way that this Shulamite woman did. And it's in John 20, 11. But Mary, that is Magdalene, stood at the sepulcher, weeping outside. As then she wept, she leaned over into the sepulcher, and she views two angels in white, one being seated at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus has been laid. And they say to her, those ones, O woman, why do you weep? And she says to them that they took my Lord and I know not where they placed him. Just does that ring a bell of the Shulamite looking around? And these things having said, she turns to the rear and views Jesus standing. And uh, the angels are like the uh, guards. And she knows not that it is Jesus. And Jesus says to her, A woman, why do you weep? Whom do you seek? <laughs> oh, wow, seek. Same exact words in the um, in the Song of Solomon. That one thinking that he is the gardener says to him, Oh, Master, if you bore him, tell me where you put him and I'll take him. And Jesus says to her, Mary. Turning that one says to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. And Jesus says to her, uh, Do not touch me for not yet have I ascended to my father but go to the, my brothers and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, and my God and your God. Then Mary Magdalene comes reporting to the disciples that she has seen the Lord in these things, he said to her. I will seek whom my soul loves. So we see that uh, with Mary. And then, uh, it, and then they found her. Uh, and the guards keeping the angels circling the city. They were in the tomb. And it was a little time when I passed by them until of which I found whom my soul loved. Bringing Christ into our hearts, just as Mary saw the resurrected Christ, he's no longer a friend. He's no longer another human being like the people that she knows. He's no longer a, a powerful a prophet, but he is resurrected. 
He is now Lord of her life. He is God in the flesh. And he comes into her heart then, and she sees, even though he was in the heart in a way, but now he comes into the heart as right here. I held him, and not that I let him go, until of which I brought him into my house, the house of my mother and into the inner chamber of the one conceiving me. In the inner chamber of our heart, our love for him uh, brings him into our inner chamber. Then the narrator again says, I bound you by an oath, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the powers and by the strengths of the field. If you should arise and wake in love until whenever it should want. Then it says, uh, Who is this ascending from the wilderness as sticks of smoke? Uh, be, and this would be the uh, narrator, uh, yeah. And who is she ascending from out of the wilderness as sticks of smoke? Being of burning incense of myrrh and frankincense from all the powders of the perfumers. And we see in Matthew 2.11, where it says, And having come unto the residence, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and having fallen, they did obeisance to him. And having opened their treasuries, they offered to him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Right here, frankincense and myrrh. Boy, amazing how much of Jesus is in this book. Now we're the Magi that came. And now, in verse 7, it says, Behold, the bed of Solomon, 60 mighty men around about it. Powerful man, all these guards, mighty, from the mighty ones of Israel, all holding a broadsword, being taught war. Every man with his broadsword upon his thigh because of the consternations in the night. Well, we see the power of the Christ in Matthew 26, 53, where Peter cut off the ear of the servant, I think his name was Malchus, when they were in the garden coming to arrest Jesus. And it says, Jesus says, Or do you think that I am not able just now to call for aid of my Father? And he will stand by me more than 12 legions of angels, Think Solomon and all these men were powerful? How about Jesus? Twelve legions of angels. One angel could destroy the earth. And here we have twelve, and a legion was a hundred, so that would have been at least a twelve hundred angels coming to his aid. Most powerful thing ever in the history of the world that was mentioned, I believe, and his angels. In verse 9 until the end, it gets specific about King Solomon. It says, King Solomon made for himself a carriage from woods of Lebanon. And his columns he made of silver and his couch of gold. And the columns of the house of his, probably, his step was purple, and this was going up to his throne. And within it, lithostraton, a stone pavement of love, agape, a stone pavement of love. Now, where do we see this? Where else do we see this? Second Chronicles 7, 3, it says, And all the sons of Israel, seeing the fire come down, and that was at the dedication of the Temple of Solomon, and the glory of the Lord upon the house, that they fell upon their face, upon the ground, upon lithostratos, the stone pavement, this lithostratos, same Greek word. You wouldn't see this in the Hebrew, but you do in the Apostolic Bible. And they did obeisance and gave praise to the Lord. So the stone pavement uh, upon the house uh, the, the, of God, now, where do we next do we see this stone pavement that the Jews did obeisance uh, to God? We see it in John 19, 13. Then Pilate, hearing this word, brought Jesus outside and sat 
upon the rostrum in the place being called Lithostratos, but in Hebrew, Gabatha. I looked up in the Hebrew uh, for this Lithostratos, and it didn't have Gabatha. But here we have Jesus being condemned by the people on Lithostratos, uh, the stone pavement of love. And these people hated him. The Jews hated him so much. It's just amazing how much hatred they have. And I believe it exists today, if not even stronger. Uh, One famous, I wouldn't call her a comedian, people call her a comedian. She's a Jewish comedian, said if Jesus was here again, we'd kill him again, crucify him again. They really hate him. Now, there may be the few that become Messianic uh, Jews, but there are very, very few compared to most uh, that we see. So now we go back to 310 and um, Stone Pavement of Love from the Daughters of Jerusalem, who later, as we mentioned, the Daughters of Jerusalem are warned by Jesus not to cry for him, but to cry for themselves. Things will change for the Jews in their unbelief. Oh, change again. The daughters of Jerusalem will be crying again, I believe, when the, uh, when the uh, man of sin appears and goes into the temple. And the Jews will think that he is Messiah, but he has come to destroy them. That's my opinion. Not that he, won't, not that he will come. It says that in Second Thessalonians, but that uh, the daughters of Jerusalem will suffer again. Come forth and behold daughters of Zion, unto the king Solomon, unto the crown which his um, mother crowned him in the day of his betrothing and in the day of the gladness of his heart. And we see, if that's, yeah, 1 Kings one eleven, it says, But Nathan the prophet and Benaiah and the mighty ones and Solomon, uh, but Nathan the prophet and Benaiah and the mighty ones, and Solomon, his brother he did not call, the brother of Solomon. And Nathan said to Bathsheba, mother of Solomon, saying, Did you not hear that Adonijah, son of Haggath, reigns? And our master David knows not? And now come, I will advise you with advice, so that you should preserve your life and the life of Solomon your son. Come enter unto King David, and you shall say to him, Have you not, O my master, O king, sworn by an oath to your bondman, saying that Solomon your son shall reign after me? And you can read all the rest. It's quite a long chapter. But Bathsheba uh, was his mother, the woman that David saw on the when he she was taking a bath and he was building his house was up higher, and he ended up uh, having relations with her uh, and putting her husband to death, and then had a child who died, and then Solomon. It's really, isn't it amazing how here, of all the wives of Solomon, picks the one that, uh, the worst case scenario, the things that Solomon did, and yet that is the mother of the next king. That's just amazing. So with us, God chooses the people that you wouldn't expect to be a believer. I meet with these three men every once in a while. Two of them are atheists. One says he somewhat believes. But the um, one atheist, as I've been seeing him uh, the last time, he was, we were talking about the Bible, and I said, I thought you said you were an atheist. And I, well, I mean, I, well, there we go. So I know the other fellow for years, and he has not accepted anything that I have to say of the Bible. But yet here this other person now has joined in, and who knows how God works. Uh, The person we may think we are ministering to may not be the one that God is ministering to. The other person hearing what you're saying, sitting in the next table or uh, wherever uh, around uh, in your house, person in your family, the last one you would think would come to the Lord, could hear what you're saying and start thinking about it. We have no way of knowing. We really don't. And uh, our best efforts uh, are should be led by God, and however God works is fine with me. 
the fourth chapter. Now the kinsman, the man, is now going to speak in response to what was said. Hope you join us. Chapter 4. Till the next time, God bless.